Hi, it's Wallace Jovetich again with your Monday video. Today I'm talking about three books that are backlist books. Do not get enough love in my opinion. The first one is probably my favorite book ever. I have a hard time saying what my favorite book is because it's kind of like, because <sighs> it's just such a difficult question. But if I think about the book that I've probably read the most times and the one that I could probably read over and over and over again, if I could only choose one more book ever to read again, it would be this one. 84, Sharing Cross Road by Helene Hanf. I, I love this book. It is so easy, it is so short. There is an epistolary book, it's not a novel, this is real. These letters start in the 1940s and 1949 between Helene and a bookseller named Frank in England. Uh, she's writing him, asking for books, he works at a bookstore, uh, she can't find them near her. So anyway, it becomes a friendship, they write these letters back and forth, very literary based, very much for the book lover. You'll love it, you'll love it. I've never met anybody who's read it who hasn't, only I have met a lot of people who have not read it. So, do yourself a favor, pick this book up from the library or the bookstore, so small, like I said, it's so short, you can read it in a couple hours. You can read it probably in an hour, uh, if you're a quick reader. And then there's actually a movie that stars Anthony Hopkins, Judi Dench, and Bancroft about the book. So if you want to treat yourself to that, I think it took place, I think they did it in like the 1980s, then you can do that after you read it. Read it, read it, read it, and read it first. Read it first. The next one is Here If You Need Me by Kate Braestrup. I think I might be ruining her name, but Kate Braestrup. I rarely come across anybody who's read this book, and I adored it. This book is about loss and healing but about life and so much more. You don't have to have lost somebody to read it and enjoy it. She's just so real. She happens to be a chaplain for the search and rescue team in Maine, and I'm wondering if that's why not as many people read this, if they think for some reason it's gonna be like a religious text. Um, it's not. She's, she's very universal in her thinking. Um, it's not geared really towards religion and uh, it's more geared towards humanity and how we deal with things and just being super real about how hard some things can be and how fragile life is but how beautiful it is and it's really just a beautiful book like I have so many passages underlined in this book I probably couldn't even loan it out because it's like a diary it's such a beautiful read I really recommend this to people who are looking for something a little bit deep maybe a little bit Cheryl Straitish. Um, if you haven't read it, it's been out for years, so it's, it's out in paperback and everything. It should be easy to find or at your local library. So do yourself a favor and pick this one up if you're ready for a thinker and a feeler. The next author, Sarah Vowell, has like a cult following. So the people who love Sarah Vowell love Sarah Vowell. And then there are so many people who haven't heard of her. And the thing is, Sarah Vowell is not a very public figure as an author. She doesn't have a website. She goes on book tour when she, you know, writes a book, which most of them do, but she doesn't really do anything else. She's not really visible around, like, she's not on Twitter, she's not on Instagram, she's not on Facebook. So she's hard to find, and if you just, if you don't know about her, then you don't know about her. If you'd never listened to her on NPR back when she used to work there, um, or have seen her on Jon Stewart, then you probably missed her entirely, unless somebody has handed you the book and said, read this. Um, I'm not just recommending this one. This is Assassination Vacation. I'm recommending all of her books. I love every single one of her books. The only one that I was not like obsessed with was Unfamiliar Fishes, and uh, that was her latest one. But that was more just topical. But honestly, she is so funny. And it, can I just recommend that you don't even read it, you listen to it? Like if you need an audiobook, Sarah Vowell has the best audiobooks you could possibly listen to. She reads all of her own stuff. So first of all, she has the funniest, greatest voice in the world. She has a great sense of humor, so her timing is perfect. It's her own work, so she knows how to like deliver, deliver people. Get her books on audio. I cannot stress this enough. They are all backlisted. Even her most recent one is backlisted. So you should be able to find it at your library, at your store, anything's in paperback. So if you choose to read it, that's totally fine. You're still gonna love it. She does talk about history a lot, but you don't even have to be a history lover 
to want to read her books. She's that good. So I really recommend her if you've not grabbed her before. So those are my three picks that people should read and I don't know why I don't see more people reading them. So take a trip to your library or your local bookstore and grab those books soon and I will see you again next Monday. Happy reading. Bye.